Blog Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to Shedding the Bitch Radio, where you can discuss, debate, and get advice on how to discover and shed the bitches of fear, insecurity, self-doubt, and negative mindsets. Hi everyone, good day, good day, good day, it's Bernadette, and I just cut that commercial off briefly, uh, only because we're going to have a, a replay of our interview with Sharon Williams due to a last minute cancellation from our guest, Rihanna Millen. And uh, we'll see about getting that um, scheduled at another time. So I hope you're all doing well on this beautiful Tuesday. And uh, our interview with Sharon Williams was one of our most popular ones over in the last uh, about three months. So I thought that um, everyone can use a little bit more discussion as we get into the new year in regards to connections and in regards to making relationships that stick and into relationships that are going to benefit you, uh, whether it is at home or at work, and how you can use these connections um, as you're fostering them and developing them over days, weeks, months, and years, even decades, um, in your achievement of your goals. And the only thing I will um, shout out before I turn it over to the replay is, you know, we are three weeks in. This is when people start wavering on those resolutions, on those goals they've set for themselves. And um, I know for myself, I just started Weight Watchers last week. And woohoo, I lost 2.4 pounds. Um, But it is a constant, you know, uh, conversation with yourself. It's a constant resetting of when you feel like you're falling off your goals. Um, You just need to kind of get your, your head in the game and hit that reset button, whether it's minutes from now or tomorrow or a week from now, don't give up on your goals just simply because you might have had a little bit of a mental, emotional, physical, whatever, you know, setback. So I just want to throw that out there um, since we are going into the third week of the new year. And I don't want you to be giving up on your, on your goals and your dreams. So Deborah's out there. She'll be watching and listening. And if you have anything you want to be sharing with us during this broadcast, then please go onto Facebook or Twitter, Shedding the Bitch, and uh, she will see you out there. Um, But enjoy this conversation with Sharon Williams, and forgive that you will hear the uh, replay of our opening uh, commercial. So um, that's why I cut it off early, so you didn't have to hear it twice. Uh, Anyway, enjoy the episode, and I'll talk to you right back here next week when I actually talk with Jenny Townsend, all about shattering the glass walls, not the ceiling, shattering the glass walls. You're going to want to tune in for that. I'm actually thrilled about this upcoming interview. So I'll talk to you next week. Thanks, everyone. This is New York firefighter Raphael Poirier for Firehouse Subs. Every day, a part of every sub you buy at Firehouse Subs helps provide life-saving equipment for first responders. And now, for a limited time, they're introducing the Daily Sub Special. Every day, get a medium sub of the day for just $5.55. They kick it off with Meatball Monday and finish it off with Italian Sunday with something delicious every day in between for just $5.55. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. Tap the banner now to learn more. Blog Talk Radio. Hello, and welcome to Shedding the Bitch Radio, where you can discuss, debate, and get advice on how to discover and shed the bitches of fear, insecurity, self-doubt, and negative mindsets, so you can realize your dreams and life purpose, and create and accelerate the riches you want in life. Join us here live every Tuesday at noon Eastern, and dialogue with us at 818-572-2910. You can also chat with us at Blog Talk Radio slash Shedding the Bitch. Or share your stories on our website at SheddingTheBitch.com. Whatever the bitch is that's holding you back from living your life to the fullest, it's not worth giving up the riches in life that you deserve. So call in now and let Bernadette Bowes know what's holding you back. 818-572-2910. Good day, good day, good day, everyone. And uh, let's see. Happy last day of Hanukkah. (laughs) Happy last maybe six days till Christmas. And I'm in studio. I'm so excited. I'm in studio with our guest, Sharon Williams. Hi, Sharon. Hello, Bernadette. How are you? Fabulous. <laughs> I'm with you. Oh, <laughs> shucks. 
making me blush. Anyway, it is a wonderful day. It's actually warm in Atlanta right now. Which is fabulous. It's fabulous, except it's been really weird because you wake up to like 47 degree weather at 7 o'clock in the morning. And there's this deep, creepy fog. Yeah over the city and I happen to walk my um I happen to walk Charlie my dog they mm-hmm. all know Charlie he's not here with me because we're in studio today but and we are recording so you'll be able to see this on Shane the Bitch uh YouTube channel but um so I take Charlie to our local park mm-hmm. and it's a has this big meadow which is just gorgeous um and it was really creepy there the other morning mm-hmm. yesterday morning I think it was um because it was just like this fog just not like off the ground, which, you know, yeah, it's uh, kind of float. It was yeah. like thick all the way to the ground. Yeah. So you really couldn't even see anybody. So I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like feeling like I'm in somebody's murder mystery. <laughs> going, okay, is somebody going to jump out at me on the, you know, from behind a tree or something? <laughs> and then we were walking down the path, which was even eerier, down the walking path, and ran into a, a young woman with her dog. And she's like, oh, my God, thank God I ran into somebody. She goes, this is the creepiest walk in this weather. And I said, well, I said it is, but and yet it's in this very kind of very nice mm-hmm. community, co- cloister community. Anyway, enough about babbling about. But it was mystical. It was but it mystical. was mystical. And we've gotten over the, um, uh, we had ice mageddon, I guess, a few years ago. What did they call this whole disaster at the Atlanta airport the last couple of days? Oh, um, just a hot mess. Yeah, you know? it was a hot mess, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> Chick-fil-A had to come rescue people and feed them. Oh, my. And then I and I also saw, so, yeah, shout out to Chick-fil-A. Yes. Shout out to Krispy Kreme, too, because I saw some clippings of them oh, handing Kreme. out dozens and dozens. And I actually thought about it. I was like, I wonder if I should get in my car and, like, take stuff down there. And then I thought, no, I'll just be adding to the mess that could be going on down there. So And the I police were away. actually turning people away. Oh, were they? Yeah. I wasn't sure if people were able to come in to pick up you know, family members or whomever and take them to hotels that were all booked. You know, it, it was crazy. It was crazy, but I hope you all were able to kind of like work your way through it and you've gotten wherever you need to go or you're working on it because I believe some of you are still <laughs> trying to get where you're supposed to be going um, because we are in the thick of it. We're yeah. in the last days and you're all trying to get home to your families and, and friends. So uh, let's do it safely, calmly. Let's do it with joy in our hearts because you know what you can't control the situation it is what it is Uh, take a deep breath and just kind of you know hang out and uh, enjoy the people around you enjoy the sightseeing of watching people and let them carry on you don't have to carry on let them carry on (laughs) Uh, (laughs) let's see what else is going on Uh, last night of Hanukkah like I said happy happy Hanukkah to all my my friends around the world um, obviously everybody's crazy and shopping. I'm not going home, uh, this year to my 11 brothers and sisters and all my nieces and nephews, uh, which is, you know, it's hard. Um, at the same time, I'll just drink a lot. <laughs> and, my, and my sisters who are listening to this are going, yes, yeah, she will. Yes, yeah, she will. No, I'm kidding. Somebody has to. Yeah, somebody <laughs> has to, you know, um, but I am going to miss everyone, and I tell them like every day on Facebook and on our tweet, you know, on our text side, how much I'm going to miss them for the holiday. <laughs> and you are going to New York, up, yeah. upstate, upstate New York, where you're my from. family. Yes, yeah. we'll have a white Christmas. Hey, you know yes. you can't beat that. Yeah, and good food. And good food, yeah. I bet. Uh, do you do the turkey thing on Thanksgiving? Um, we do ham. Ham? Do you? Yes, yeah, scalloped potatoes. Oh, nice. We'll do a prime rib. Nice. We'll do turkey one of those days. My dad loves turkey. Right. Well, yeah. friends of mine, because for Thanksgiving, we have these orphan Thanksgivings. Just Love whoever's that. left and don't mm-hmm. have, you know, a family to go to, and we invite them kind of okay. as a group of friends, you know, mm-hmm. hanging out. So we obviously Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah. But then a debate started with, I don't want turkey for thang- for Christmas. I don't want turkey for Christmas. And I'm sitting there going, um, I'm sure as hell having turkey for the Christmas. Oh, you are. You're a yeah, turkey person. Yeah, I'm a turkey person because okay. it's the only time I really eat it at Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and, and Christmas. So if anybody wants to cook pot roast or ham or anything, that's all fine and good. Okay. I will be buying myself, if that's the case, a turkey and cooking it and making sure I have tons of leftovers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your sandwiches. Oh, yeah. gosh. Strum and bread, 
some turkey, a tomato, a little dash of salt, it's a be- and mayonnaise. It's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. thing. A beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Over the next couple of weeks, <laughs> that's we're just talking. We can just, talk, the, food. We can just <laughs> talk food the rest of the hour. Um, but speaking of talking, uh, over the next couple of weeks, Deborah even mentioned uh, Deborah Parker of Parker House Virtual Services. She's out there. Hi, Deborah. Hey, Deborah. She's always on mute, so she's like, "Hello." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it takes me minutes to get back to my call to unmute. Of course, of course, of course. Um, but she even mentioned um, uh, the fact. Oh my God, I just totally love. Oh, she even mentioned that you know we only have really, I guess, two. When is New Year's? So I think next week is really the last Tuesday of December before we get into the new year, because New Year's is Monday, right? Right. The following Monday. Yeah. So, yes, we only have one more uh, radio episode of 2017. Um, and, uh, you know, as promised and as we always do for the last five years, uh, next week we'll be talking goals and resolutions and how to keep them, not just writing your goals, but um, we'll share tips and advice and sometimes tough love around how do you keep them? You know, I heard this very uh, funny um, video this morning, and it was uh, this guy that was joking about the fact that these people in the gym should stop bitching about the newbies, the year, you know, the new year (laughs) newbies, because they'll be gone by Valentine's. Well, that doesn't make me feel good. You know, that doesn't make me feel good. I'm very, you know, big on on goals and sticking to them. So we'll talk about that next week. Uh, We also have talked about, though, over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've talked about everything from managing the chaos of this time of year, overall stress. It doesn't matter if it's just at the holidays and what you can do about that. Um, how do you overcome the holiday blues? A lot of people deal with depression and sadness and loneliness this time of year. Uh, and sometimes you don't even know it. You can look at somebody and they look like they're kind of in the spirit and yet they're dealing with a lot of stuff internally. So we talked about that. We also talked about, um, last week especially, uh, we talked about how to find a job this time of year. I don't know. You're a corporate. We'll talk about that. Um, and, you know, they do all these layoffs the Monday after Thanksgiving. Yeah. And people are just like, what the heck? It's, you know, the holidays. And yet you're laying me off. And there's, you know, there's, it's, don't take it personally. There's a lot of business reasons behind that. But it, it's also a great time of year to find a job is during this time of year. So uh, we've talked about that and provided you tips and things that you could be doing right now um, in regards to that. So check out our past episodes. You can go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash shedding the bitch radio. You can go right to our shedding the bitch.com radio channel on shedding the bitch, um, our website, and you'll get all the past episodes. As well, don't forget our YouTube channel for shedding the bitch. And just like today, I have Sharon in the studio. We are videotaping. And so you'll see past episodes that we've had the pleasure of having our guests in studio. And you'll be able to see our lovely faces. (laughs) And see that I'm actually not looking like somebody from Long Island with big hair and big nails and whatnot, which I've been described as before. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay. I'm actually, you know, that redhead Irish woman. (laughs) Whatever. So anyway, let's see what else is going on. All right. Let's get into this conversation, shall we? We're talking connection, and there's a reason why we're actually having this conversation. We'll get into all that with uh, Sharon, but we want to talk about connection, and a lot of people don't know how to make connections, and then when you make that connection, how do you foster them and really leverage them in your career, business, and life pursuits, Um, and then there's kind of a technical technology, technological a way to stay connected, and this is the woman that's going to help you do that as well. Um, so we're going to be talking about all of that, and it, we're going to tie it into being both a corporate professional and an entrepreneur, and how to start, manage, or grow uh, whatever kind of career it is that you're establishing for yourself, all right? So we always leave you with a rich question um, to kind of get into your head as we're talking. Most likely, our guests will address your question, and if not, then you always have an opportunity to go out to our Shedding the Bitch Facebook or Twitter page and leave us questions or comments or stories. You can also, I'll make sure you have Sharon's contact information uh, throughout the show uh, in case you want to reach out to her um, individually. 
Uh, and then you can always just reach out to me directly at Bernadette Bose at SheddingTheBitch.com. And I'll always make sure that our expert uh, receives whatever question I can address for you or you directed to that guest. Okay? So here's your risk question for today. We're going to be talking about connections, relationships. What is your biggest challenge when it comes to making connections uh, to the people that can help you uh, really advance or advance in your career, advance in your business growth? Maybe you are looking to start a a business of your own. Uh, It requires relationships. It requires connections. So what could you, what is your challenge in doing so? And uh, think about that as we're talking. And if you're formulating questions, great. You can always call into us, too, at 1-818-572-2910 while we're live. Um, And I will also watch the chat room in case anybody wants to kind of connect with us through the chat. So there's a lot of ways to get any of the questions that you have addressed. So that's your question, your biggest challenge when it comes to connecting. Uh, And your rich tag. Use the risk tag connecting or uh, uh, the hashtag connecting or the hashtag shed the bitch. Okay. All right. When we get back, I'll introduce you formally to our guests and we'll get into this conversation. We'll be right back. You are listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bowes. We are inspiring individuals around the globe to discover, confront, and shed their bitches of fear, insecurity, and negativity so they can create the riches in their career, business, and life they deserve. Be sure to check out Bernadette's book, Shedding the Corporate Bitch, Shifting from Bitch to Rich in Life and Business, available on Amazon and SheddingTheBitch.com. We also want to thank our sponsors, TSR Consulting, who offers a broad range of tax services for small to corporate-sized clients. Go to TSRConsulting.com to learn more. And Parker House Virtual Services, who provides virtual assistance and social media support for small to medium-sized businesses. Email Deborah Parker at Deborah Parker78 at gmail.com for more information. To become a sponsor or advertiser on our program, email us at media relations at sheddingthebitch.com. Shedding the Bitch Radio airs every Tuesday at noon Eastern Time. Be sure to go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash shedding the bitch radio and follow the program for all of the updates and announcements of our guests and show topics. Now let's return to Bernadette and Shedding the Bitch Radio. Welcome back, everyone. We are in studio with Sharon Williams. She's the CEO of Go Blue Technology. More importantly, she's the CEO of really being able to help you get connected or, or get relationships that can help you really prosper in whatever goal that you might have. And this is the perfect time of year to have this conversation as you're not only defining your goals, but you're all amped up to go into the new year um, with whatever goals you're going to be pursuing. So let me formally introduce you to her first, and then we'll dive in. Sharon is a healthcare executive and entrepreneur, innovating technologies with Go Blue technology to keep people connected. She has more than 25 years of experience in healthcare operations and policy with over a billion dollars of P&L responsibility. As a senior executive for several health plans, she was responsible for the overall operations of the health plan, including strategic direction, administration for all existing programs, and the development of new programs to ensure goals and objectives were met or exceeded. She has led and directed the overall improvement of operations, including provider contracting and relations, sales and marketing, claims operating systems, call center responsiveness, medical management, regulatory compliance, and finance. I was going to start laughing when I read call center responsiveness, Uh because I think every one of us wants better call center responsiveness. Yes. (laughs) So it's awesome to have you. It's awesome, awesome, awesome to have you. I want, as we dive into this conversation, I I want you to be immediately connected with her. So please go to goblutech.com, and that's blue without the E. So it's goblutech.com. And SharonWilliamsPortfolio.com, and you can learn all about both of her uh, technology that's going to help you get connected, as well as all about Sharon herself. You can also Facebook with her at Sharon Williams, 
tweet with her. Oh, I love her um, Twitter handle. Tweet with her at SW Health. 007. 007. That's right. Health 007. <laughs> so that's SWL 007. Oh. The girl thinks I'm whack. Yeah, All right. Love it. Love it. LinkedIn, of course, you know, Sharon Williams, but uh, you'll pre- uh, specifically find her as Sharon A. Williams. And, uh, and then, of course, um, you can always, again, if your answer to your rich question is not addressed, then you can always email her directly at swhealth007 at gmail.com. And I'll remind you of that throughout the program. All right, now that we've gotten all that. So help us understand kind of your background and your experience in the healthcare industry and kind of then taking it from corporate to being an entrepreneur. Sure. And I loved how you, you described my background. It sounded very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> That's more than it really is. And, you know, I, I started off my career kind of right out of grad school. Um, and I was able to get my first job through connections. Um, and I worked for an insurance company. And I got the interview because I had reached out to um, a friend of mine. Her dad was on the board to this company. And um, through this connection, and he remembered me from um, high school, I, I went to convent, and uh, made the recommendation. So I was literally right out of grad school working for the chief operating officer for the largest health insurance company in upstate New York. And it was a great job. Um, and, I, and I loved it. And I think part of how I succeeded in my job was building great relationships with everyone throughout the organization and leading kind of... Um, enterprise-wide initiatives where it hits every single department, um, I needed people in order to reach my goal. Sure. I couldn't do it without them. And so um, high pressure, um, big goals, and I would just like bribe, not say bribe people, but <laughs> if I needed something kind of pushed ahead, I would show up with coffee. I would show up with a bottle of scotch. <laughs> you know, when people saw me coming, well, they knew I was going to ask for something, so they knew I'd appreciate it. Um, and part of building um, connections um, and keeping both my career and these relationships going is it's little things like saying thank you mm-hmm. or you're awesome. I really appreciate it. I know you're doing your job, but I appreciate you. And these are relationships I still have 25, 30 years later. I can still call on these people right. and these people call on me. And I think as I look through my career and I've moved to a number of different health insurance companies all throughout the country, um, I think my greatest achievement is maintaining those relationships where anybody can call me if they need something. Yep. Um, and, and so it's not all high tech. Some of it is actually, um, you know, low tech. It's just an email. It's a text. We're all connected on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. Facebook, Absolutely. Twitter. And I think the other thing is when I just think of somebody, you know, if they just pop into my head, I call them or I reach out. Nice. So there's, there's no regrets there. And I right. find that they do that with me as well. And I, I just love to hear somebody's voice. Like, Sharon, I was just thinking of you. Yeah. And I, yep. and I love that. Yep. Um, and, and so to make the, the leap from kind of working for companies, um, helping them make millions. Right. Right. Billions in <laughs> right. this case. Right. I'm thinking, well, how can I do this for me? Um, and and I, when did you make that leap? What was the year? It was a few years ago. Okay. So okay. 2015. Okay. Um, and I, I don't know why I didn't think of it earlier. You know, in 2014, I started my consulting practice, but I really – kind of kicked it into gear in 2015 where I said, I've really got to be deliberate about this. Mm-hmm. I have to build my own website. I can't just rely. I did it for a couple of years, just word of mouth, because I had this kind of connection. Right. That's how I started right. my business. You mean, and when you say that, you mean from um, prospecting and lead generation? My lead generation from was purely my network. From your, your network. Yeah. And I realized, okay, I've got to be a little more systematic about this. Right. Especially if I want to grow a little bit larger. Because mm-hmm. people would say, well, what's show me your website. I didn't even have a website because I was busy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I wanted to get beyond that. So right. Okay, Sharon, 26, I got to get professional, get a website, get a social media presence um, and really build on that. Um, but you find that even with all the social media relationships, never go out of style. Right. It's, it's, it's in person. It's a phone call. And it's really just following up with people on what matters to them um, and really being able to listen. Uh, well, it, it, well, yes, and yes, and listen. I just cut you off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to, you get it, wow. to right, to right, <laughs> listen. Um, but, 
<laughs> and the reason why I did is because I I wanted to kind of also touch on something that you said earlier too when you were talking just um, those same points about connecting. Um, and you mentioned that you you know you have them 25 years later and you're able to call on them. And connecting is not necessarily you know when you go out to these networking events and you have these people pushing their business cards in your face. Yeah. You know, and then they ask you for their you know for your business card and then they put it in a database and they start blasting you with you know these newsletters that you never even wanted. This is you, what you're doing and what you're talking about is more fostering of those relationships and those connections, right? Yeah, so I think of it as tiers. So I'm glad you, you pointed out the, the business meetings and the social networking. Um, and when I think about my deep relationships, that's my tier one. That's my home base. Those are deep relationships that I've built and cultivated over the years. I still go to events. I still take people's cards. Um, you and I met at mm-hmm. an event, right? We're sitting next to each other. I was like, who is this fabulous woman? <laughs> we exchanged cards, yeah. right? No, you know it. And, and then, then I thought, who else do I want to introduce you to? Right. So I think we're natural networkers yes. in that way. Yes. Um, but even on LinkedIn, I get a lot of young professionals that reach out to me. I don't know them, but they say, you know, I saw your, your um, background, mm-hmm. and I'd like to learn kind of how do I get your work experience. And believe it or not, I say yes to most of them. Nice. And I say yes because I believe in paying it forward. Absolutely. I want to be the kind of mentor that I wanted. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, if you're brave enough or bold enough to reach out to somebody on LinkedIn and you're really just looking for advice, right. um, I'll do it. And plus, I'm also a coach. So um, I like to help out younger professionals. If I can make their path easier than mine, yeah. then let's do it. It's absolutely, absolutely. And I think a lot of, um, I call them seasoned women. Okay, seasoned. Now I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's spicy. <laughs> Yes, she is. Um, but um, and I'll tell even them because there are a lot of seasoned women that are making these transitions, yeah. and and not even necessarily from corporate to entrepreneur. But there's they're just waking up to the fact that they really should have goals and passions of their own that they should be pursuing, even if they are heads down, you know, in a full time job. And I'll even say to them that it's it's not just you know, shooting an email or a LinkedIn connection, right. you know, that doesn't have a nice message to it or, or just kind of like being very um, unintentional about it. You don't want to have an agenda, right. but you, you, you want it to be meaningful, Absolutely. you know, in order for that person to respond. And you are, you're accepting those invitations because they made that um, connection with you, yes, but more so they must have been genuine in what it was that they were looking for from you. You know, you're, you're spot on, and I loved your example about seasoned women reaching out about transition. Um, about a month ago, a woman reached out to me in LinkedIn, and she's a, a chemist, um, and wow. she works at a major pharmacy company, I'm not going to mention the name, um, Fortune 100, you know, and she's seasoned in her career, and we just started talking. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she wanted to make the move uh, to working for a health plan. And she wanted to know she could leverage her pharmacy experience for health plan. I was like, absolutely. And I, but I just talked about her current experience. I said, well, are you asking for support? If, if, if there was somebody out there that you have a good relationship with, you're calling him your mentor. Right. Do you ask him for opportunity? Mm-hmm. She just said, you know, I, I didn't even think to ask. Oh. Right? Oh, and break I, my heart. Right? And break I, and my I heart. thought, going, well, if you have a certain relationship, why not ask for what you want? Right. Right. And she just got really quiet. And then I, I asked her, don't you think you're worth it? And I think a lot of women struggle with worth and struggle with value Absolutely. in relationships. Absolutely. And there's a lot of fabulous, amazing women, a lot of fabulous people out there. Um, but I, it's in particular women, there's research that show this, that we don't ask mm-hmm. for the raise. Mm-hmm. We don't ask for the money. Mm-hmm. We don't ask for the opportunity. And I would tell a lot of people that I coach, the people you're, you want something with or want something from, they're not psychic. Right. <laughs> you have to kind of claim what right. you want. Right. And I and I thank my, my mom for that. Believe it or not, you know, I was raised the youngest of four. I have three older brothers. And, um, you know. It's boys, too. It, boys, it's the, too. It's the boy environment you were in, too. Oh, definitely. Because they you ask. stand up. They yeah. ask. And I watch them. You know, mm-hmm. they ask for mom mm-hmm. for more money and, and vacations and all this stuff. And I would just observe that, but my mother always said, you know, don't be passive aggressive. If you want something, claim it. Right. Claim right. it and, and own it. And I right. think throughout my career, 
part of how I've been able to um, move up the food chain and even become a successful entrepreneur, have my own business, is because I'm complaining what I want. And sometimes that's the hardest thing. Number one, well, what do you want? Right. right? Well, yes. Right? Yes. Figuring yes. that out. Yes. And once you figure that out. <laughs> and be yes. honest about it. Yes. Don't be scared. Yes. It's good to be scared. You know, there's a, a level of fear you want in answering that question, but it because it'll turn exciting. Yes. It'll be a, an exciting fear, you know. And yes, you might not know even what how you're going to go about pursuing that, right. you know. But you have to be honest with yourself about what it is you want. Absolutely, too. you got to claim it, right? And um, because you really can't grow in a comfort zone, it's got to be a little painful, a little yep. scary. And you face those fears, and you get stronger and stronger, right? And Absolutely. less fearless. Yep, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Fabulous. I know. <laughs> Love it. Connection. Well, and I think what you, what you also said, too, is um, because, you know, 25 years ago, you started making these relationships. Yeah. Uh, and now, <laughs> it, let's say 2015, 16, but you're also getting ready to, to launch a new, not just a business, but a new technology, a yeah. new product. You're going to be able to you reach back to those people from 25 years ago, and I'm the same way. Yeah. I can reach back to my network, yeah. even after everything I put my network through, <laughs> as y'all know about. But I can reach out to some of them, and really still, you know, pull in that support, pull in that, mm-hmm. you know, guidance, that mentorship, uh, and that is what is absolutely yes. just not only critical but just so empowering yes. about connecting. Yeah, because nobody gets anywhere alone. No. We, no. You know, we're all interdependent. Right. Um, and it's kind of climate. I bet it took me a little while to learn, to be mm-hmm. honest. Mm-hmm. It seems fairly intuitive, maybe for some of you watching, but um, this idea of, like, meeting people. Because um, I just, you know, I'm a superwoman. I, I don't meet anybody. Um, but to say, you know, I really want your support right. for this project, especially Go Blue, because it's new. It is new technology. I'm learning a lot, um, and I know I would not be able to do um, what I've done with Go Blue without the support of like ATDC, the accelerator. Oh, right. Or being co located at Tech Square Lab. Um, having They're here in Atlanta. In Atlanta, you know, Georgia Tech. Um, y- you need that community right. of like minded people who yeah. all have that entrepreneurial hustle. Mm-hmm. And they're genuinely excited mm-hmm. for me for people who are doing the work and they want to help. Mm-hmm. And they um, want you to be successful. Yeah. Which is, you know, in especially corporate individuals, not just women, but corporate individuals, they just think it's all about, you know, that individual. It's, it can be so consuming mm-hmm. of uh, selfishness and greed as opposed to, you know, coming out. It's not just in entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. I don't want to make it sound as if it's just entrepreneurship, but you're also experiencing how they want you to be successful. They do. And they actually said, and they're helping I want you, you up. to be successful. Right. And when you, when you I start talking about Go Blue, and we'll talk a little bit about what yeah, that absolutely. is, but they get very excited and they say, well, who do I know? How can I connect you? Yes. And I, I you know, especially manufacturers, things that are all brand new to me. If I didn't have the support of ATDC, the support of Tech Square Lab, I would not be able to do what, what I'm doing um, today. So uh, um, yeah. even just the idea um, of Go Blue, we actually went to a, um, um, a startup boot camp. And because I was just trying to think, how how am I going to go from this corporate position to really kind being of taking, on your own. you know, being an entrepreneur, yeah. you know, full tilt. Yep. Um, they talk about burning the house down. Well, I didn't burn my house down. <laughs> I didn't burn my house down. I'm doing it in a transitional manner. Um, I got in close. Yeah. I came really close. I know you guys. Your yeah. story is amazing. Yeah, I came really close. But go ahead. Yeah, no. So um, I didn't burn the house down. I just built connections in different boats. Um, but this idea of a mobile device charging on the go. Yeah. And so, so yeah. even though the name of the company, Go Blue, BLU, because it was the aggregated Bluetooth technology. Right. That's where that came from. Yeah. Some people hear Go Blue and they think Michigan. Uh, yeah. And it's like, no, 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 yeah, no, no, Bluetooth no. technology. Yes. Okay. Um, and so just, so starting with an idea of also building community, because we think about technology, sometimes it's, you see people totally engrossed on their cell phones, mm-hmm. and they're really not connected. Um, so we were thinking immediately of, of a, an energy community. Right. Well, and on that note, though, we're going to take a quick break, because oh, I do okay. want to have kind of like a whole introductory conversation about 
go blue, okay. what you're doing, how it is tied to this conversation about connecting. Yes. And because everybody, you definitely want to learn about this. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we'll continue our conversation with Sharon Williams of Go Blue Technology. We'll be right back. You are listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bowes. We are inspiring individuals around the globe to discover, confront, and shed their bitches of fear, insecurity, and negativity so they can create the riches in their career, business, and life they deserve. Be sure to check out Bernadette's book, Shedding the Corporate Bitch, Shifting from Bitch to Rich in Life and Business, available on Amazon and SheddingTheBitch.com. We also want to thank our sponsors, TSR Consulting, who offers a broad range of tax services for small to corporate-sized clients. Go to tsrconsulting.com to learn more. And Parker House Virtual Services, who provides virtual assistance and social media support for small to medium-sized businesses. Email Deborah Parker at deborahparker78 at gmail.com for more information. To become a sponsor or advertiser on our program, email us at Media Relations at SheddingTheBitch.com. Shedding the Bitch Radio airs every Tuesday at noon Eastern Time. Be sure to go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash Shedding the Bitch Radio and follow the program for all of the updates and announcements of our guests and show topics. Now let's return to Bernadette and Shedding the Bitch Radio. Welcome back, everyone. We are talking to Sharon Williams, all about connections, but there's a reason for it. Uh, Sharon, well, I'm going to let her tell her story, but Go Blue Technology. So goBluetech.com. I want you to go and check it all out. All right. So I am excited for you, and I don't blame all those other people um, in the technology uh, arena and the community, which is very tight here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, but you have to tell us about this and kind of what you were getting into, kind of why you came up with this idea and how it's going to benefit every single one of us that are listening and watching. All right. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> but, and I'm excited, too. Uh, so w- what is Go Blue? So Go Blue is a mobile device network community so that you can charge your mobile device on the go. What we're doing in the B2B, the business-to-business connection, is we're selling um, emitting tiles. These are tiles where you can rest your cell phone on the tile while you're at um, a coffee shop, at the car dealer. And while you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. Having drinks. Having drinks. Yeah, you do that well, girl. Um, that you can charge your cell phones on the go. And, and so we're excited about that. So there's a business community that will be purchasing the tiles. And then the consumers will just download the app to get access to the energy at no cost to the consumer. Um, that, I mean, so everybody's excited about that. I remember even when I talked to you mm-hmm. about this, you talk about connecting. Um, in the tech world, they call it customer discovery. So you talk to people and really listen to what they were saying. And the first things you said to me is, well, I like it. How, how can I get this? Are you right. just going to sell this to businesses? Right. And that was like the number one question we get as I share this story. So it taught us a couple of things, um, that we need to be prepared to sell the tile to consumers. We'll do that through our website. It's not available at some yet, point. At but some it will point. be in 2018. Right. Um, so we will have a direct-to-consumer product as well. But um, what I love about um, selling the product to businesses, the businesses really want to offer value to their customers. Sure. And you'd be surprised. More businesses want consumers to spend more time. Um, there's a reason places like Starbucks want you to come in and bring your laptop and make it their office. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to consume more coffee, but you'll do it in a more relaxing environment. So you can imagine – um, that these tiles that we're creating, they'll be able to customize a service. So an entire table, for example, instead of just having two or three outlets, the entire table can be configured with these tiles that will snap together like Legos, right? Nice. Each tile has three different cells. You can rest your cell phone on the cell, almost anywhere on the, on the tile, but maximum um, energy transmission on the cell. And, and Charge your phone. They're waterproof, so if you spill your coffee or your cocktail. <laughs> can't <laughs> you know, waste alcohol. No, you can't do okay. that. Um, you can just keep going. Um, so um, our first pilot is going to be at a restaurant. 
um, at the Atlanta airport. Okay. And we're also going to have a pilot at Texas Lab. So it's kind of two different demographics. You've got kind of like real consumers that, that are going to use it at the airport. And it's kind of tech-focused people that will really give us the business um, application of the it. business application yeah. and just kind of more detail. Now, can you custom, like you said custom, but can you des- like have a design on the tile Absolutely. so you can license it? Absolutely. Yes. So That's fairly awesome. companies I know that would want to put their logo right. Absolutely. on the tile Absolutely. or, you know, um, there's a gentleman who's an artist. He's like, what if I want to design my own mm-hmm. cover, mm-hmm. you know, to be able mm-hmm. to take that artwork and customize it? Absolutely. Now, the only... You know, the one thing that I'm, as a consumer, I'm thinking about, too, is we will get more advertising in our face because, like, say, for instance, this is Rome. You know, I'm at my Rome Innovation Workspace um, as our studio today. And so they have these beautiful farm-like tables. And if they had them and they had, like, Starbucks advertising. Because mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I I mean, if it were me, I'd I'd buy one and want to use it as a you know advertisement oh, um, in another business. Um, but I just I just think it's awesome because I often forget my tech. I often forget like today we forgot our my microphone. Yeah. Um. You know you forget and you want something that's very convenient and very easy. Yeah, and I think the other thing we're we're thinking about with advertising is to make it more passive. So it's true that we may be able to print something on the actual tile. But um, there was another discussion around um, having advertising on the app. Yes. Or yes, yes, that's true. And we're not going to do that phase one. We, we, ah. Part of our customer discoveries is, you know, we, we want the energy. We want, we're, we're, we're like in the restaurant or at the car dealer or at the be. hookah spot doing whatever it is we're doing. We don't want to constantly be right. bombarded. Right. So we wanted to really kind of value the energy transmission. And um, make sure that we get, like, um, energy utilization, things like that, back to the um, the end user. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Just, just for kind of phase one. So right. we're not in a rush to really get in there and kind of use the communication platform for advertising. It's not to say it's not there. But, right, right, And I think right. the other piece is people romanticize advertising and tech. They go, oh, we're going to be like Facebook or Twitter. Um, you have to have billions of users to be yeah. able to get – Right. meaningful return on investment. Well, not only that, but as your customer discovery mm-hmm. sessions continue, um, because I know right now uh, Facebook just changed up a lot on their platform, yes. and uh, there's a lot of communication online about the videos now yes. or have advertisement, have commercials. Yes. They don't just have the banner down at the bottom, right. but in order for you to see wh- whoever's video you just, you know, kind of clicked on, yes. you're going to actually get commercials in the middle of that, yes. of that um, video. And people are like, I did not, right. you know, sign up for this type and, of thing. And what they're preparing you for is the subscription services mm-hmm. if, if you don't want the advertising. So I think for years, we've gotten used to a lot of free content. Right. And now, um, and now we've got to pay. Either way, you're yeah. going to pay. Either right. to exposure to advertising, or you're going to pay through subscription services. Right. right. As a content provider and creator, (laughs) it's kind of like, oh, but as a consumer, it's like, oh, you know, it's good for me as a content creator. It's not so good for me as a consumer. But anyway, love it. Okay, so um, we have a lot more to talk about, about connections and relationships, so don't go anywhere. We're not going anywhere. But where can they kind of just stay in touch as this launch is happening, because I would think at some point too, they're going to want to like, you know how you can find your Starbucks. Yeah. You know, they're going to want to find the restaurant in the airport that have these tile type of thing. Yeah. So two things, uh, the website, you could sign up and be on our mailing list. Go tech.com. Go blue tech.com. Go blue tech.com. B-L-U. <laughs> we're good. Go blue tech.com. Yes. Um, and as we get ready for kind of broader product launches, we're going to um, have that information on our website. I think the other is once you download the app, when it becomes available, and by the way, this product is for both Android and Apple products. Okay. It's not in the stores yet, but it will be in 2018. Um, on the app itself, it has all the locations uh, for the Go Blue network. Nice. Yeah. And, so they and can, you can search by name. You can right. search by location. Name and of what? Name of a restaurant or a name of a, okay. Or okay. name of a provider. Right, right. McDonald's. It could be a hotel. Right. Um, there's just a lot of interest right now. We're just really trying to manage 
the expectations and demand. We want a high quality product for a market launch. Sure, absolutely. So you're thinking 2018, absolutely. early, middle, late. So our our <laughs> product launch. I'm not pressuring her into a deadline. Just kind of a time uh, peri- time yeah, period. I'm with you. I love your energy and enthusiasm. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, first quarter 2018 okay, here great. in Atlanta. Great. Product um, after that, we've already got manufacturers lined up. It's like we just can't move fast uh, enough. Yeah, I bet. Um, so by second to third quarter, we'll have broader product availability. Great. I am so excited for you because I just know how much you've been putting into this. And, and plus, I love it. <laughs> I love it. And I need it because, I, like I said, I often forget my, forget my uh, little chargers and stuff like that. Um, all right, so we're going to get back into, so just go to go blue technology, or goblutech.com yes. and um, also just link in with her, Facebook with her, and uh, she's a great, you know, individual, Sharon Williams, Portfolio.com, you can also learn more about as well. All right, so we're, we are talking about these connections, and, and the one thing that, you know, we were talking about how you... Um, how you uh, can, you know, whether it's email or a phone call, but you then mentioned and talked about maintaining them. What do you suggest? Because you are a coach and you, mm-hmm. you, you have clients when it comes to them uh, starting building and growing their business and themselves as leaders. Mm-hmm. Um, so what do you recommend that they do in order to foster and maintain and really build relationships, just not you know, line items in a CRM application. Right. No, and thank you. I mean, so there is part of it, the CRM piece. So I do track birthdays. Um, for my really close friends, I know their their children, their husbands, their significant others, their spouses. Um, and I don't necessarily send cards for all of that. Yeah, right, but, right, right, right. But right. it's like, you know, I had a friend who um, just had her 26th anniversary with her husband, and I called it 26 years, and he's still alive. So congratulations. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so... And then, then she had to call me, and then we, you know, we start we start chatting. Um, so here's some really basic tips to, to connecting, um, you know, and especially if it's somebody you want to develop a relationship with, beyond wanting to sell them something, and beyond um, wanting to get something from them. I think um, at its core, you really it's really important to share values with the people that you want to connect with. It can't be just transactional. Right. That's really empty. Um, and we could talk about kind of, I know you had somebody here a couple of weeks ago um, talking about sales. Right, right. And building relationships mm-hmm. for sales. That's something different, and that was a fantastic video, and I highly recommend kind of watching that video um, on sales. So this is about really connecting, building relationships with people you share values with. Because when you don't share values, there are some things that come up um, that, you know, in the long term make it really challenging to keep that relationship and keep mm-hmm. it authentic. Mm-hmm. So assuming you, you really care about the person <laughs> and it is about kind of building relationships, then I would think about reaching out to them like quarterly. Um, think about it either as a phone call or an email or a text, depending on what the person likes. Um, the other is if you see articles or something of interest that you know I the love person that. would enjoy. love that. Like, one of my best friends, actually, I've known her since my freshman year of college, okay? Aww. I don't have to say how many years ago that was. <laughs> uh, they'll figure out I'm old as Methuselah. <laughs> <laughs> like, she loves the Food Fighters, right? And we've been to, like, several Food Fighters um, concerts, even here in Atlanta. Oh, they wow, were here, okay. okay. So they were on SNL, and they did this great um, version of it, like, the Christmas song and one of their classics. And Rolling Stone um, sent out the video, right? As soon as I saw it, I thought of her. Aww. So I sent her the video and said, you know, I uh, thought she would love it. And then she just texted me back, you know, thank you for thinking of me and, you know, Merry Christmas. Nice. So it's not rocket science. Right. But it, right. it's when you know something somebody likes or mm-hmm. is interested in and you see it, maybe it's a New York Times article or um, a, a Facebook posting. We Thank share all that um, as a community. Yep. And even on my link book, you, LinkedIn site, you'll see that I post certain things. And I have certain friends I've known since grad school, and, and they'll respond. Thank you, Sharon, you know, for mm-hmm. sending that. Um, or if they post something, they'll, they'll call me out. Sharon Williams, I saw this live article because I'm a geek and I love <laughs> love NASA. <laughs> so I, I think you'd appreciate this, you know, the meteor showers or something. 
Um, so it's, it's sharing common interest and not kind of waiting for an invitation. Yeah. Um, or, or waiting for an invitation to, to reach out to somebody. It's really it's coming from the heart. It's a very authentic place. Yep. Yep. And it's just, and people appreciate that. They appreciate being thought of. So the birthdays and anniversaries are kind of the, the easy ones, but I think it's um, just coming in contact with, with your daily life. Right. An article, content, um, right. a video, and just sharing that. Well, and I think that, that you, you brought up the point of, of um, the birthdays and anniversaries, and I'll be the first to admit, I am horrible when it comes to, uh, like sending cards or whatnot for birthdays and anniversaries. And my 11 brothers and sisters will, will agree with me. <laughs> um, however, um, because I have a few sisters that, you know, they're organized. They have a box. They have oh all these cards in there for all the different occasions. Mm-hmm. And they have probably the list taped to the box of everybody's, you know, birthdays and anniversaries. But since I was a young kid, I just, I always celebrate. Um, but I do it in a way of like phone calls, yeah. uh, you know, a nice little uh, image I'll pull down off of, you know, the internet and I'll send it to them. Uh, you know, I've I've been gone at, away from them, kind of, you know, next door to them since I was like 17. No excuse. There's a post office right down the street from my house. <laughs> I just, it's just never been something that I've really been good at. Mm-hmm. So I just realized that, well, the most important thing is connecting um, and so I'll, you know, reach out to them. I'll send them a video like nowadays, you know, for the last few years, I'll, you know, do a video and yeah. sing them a song, something that I know will embarrass them and post it on Facebook. <laughs> and then I'll send it to them personally. <laughs> but, you know, so I think it's just getting creative too, yeah. right, as far as being connected and doing it genuinely. Yeah. Uh, because, again, those business cards being pushed in your face, it's not what it's about. It's, no. And even LinkedIn. LinkedIn you know, you'll get barraged with invitations to let be linked in. And that, but at the same time, it's like, make it personal, yeah. read their profile, add something in there, you know, to kind of just say that I actually, you mentioned listen before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a degree of listening is to really, you know, kind of, even on their profile, you can listen to what it is that they yeah. do and who they are in their profile and reflect back to that. No, absolutely, and I think the reflection piece is key in all your relationships, whether it's personal or professional. Mm-hmm. People want to know that you really see them uh, and that you're listening to them. So, you know, I'm a management consultant. So that's my bread and butter for the most part. And my clients sometimes say, how do you know this? Or how can you, you haven't been here long enough. Long enough. How do you know? And it's like, well, I listen to your people. Mm-hmm. I listen to the call. I listen to what's being said. Mm-hmm. I listen to what's not being said. I pay attention to tone. I pay attention to body language. Um, but you can hear so much even on a conference call. Mm. Um, when you ask a tough question and how people backpedal verbally, you, know, you, you can hear the hem and a hem and a hem and a <laughs> You can hear it. And so then, then I follow up. So I'm not going to put anybody on blast. You know, when you've got 20 people on a conference call, right, right. I never do that. Or sometimes I will text my client, if the CEO or CFO is like, I don't know if you're hearing what I'm hearing, mm-hmm. but let's follow up on that. The this. beautiful thing with technology. Yeah. You can do that. The instant you messages can do that. on the side. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, I really, I care deeply about operational outcomes. You'll see that on my website. But um, in executing value, part of that value is really just listening in ways um, that I think surprises my clients and even sometimes my friends. Yeah. Um, and, and so being able to reflect that and reflect it um, hopefully in a non-threatening way. Right, right. Um, and make it kind of – I've known you for a while. Not ter- real long, but mm-hmm. I can never imagine you coming across in a threatening way. <laughs> well, you know what? Okay, no, thank you for saying that. I, so it, well, there's two things I just learned in that statement, right? Well, you're a very powerful woman, and you're not a fearful woman. That's – you you live like you lead with love. You Thank lead you. with passion, um, and you're authentic. So you're not going to be threatened by somebody like me, because um, you're authentic. In the business world, there's a lot of people who are not authentic. That's true. Okay. That's true. And in the business world, there I don't care whether you're an entrepreneur or working in corporate or nonprofit or government. Human beings are human beings. And so many people are driven by fear mm, and is- driven by scarcity. So, um, and so it took me a while to learn that because I'm not a fear-oriented person. Right. 
but it took me a long time to realize how fearful people are, especially of people who have an understanding of what they're doing. So if I'm leading with content and I want to engage you on content, so talk about, let's say I have to make, build a connection, right? Mm-hmm. And I like to keep it real. And I'm talking to you, and you don't do this, but you know there's people out there who BS, right? And then I'll ask a couple of other questions, right? And then I can hear the hem and a hem and a hem and a, uh. right? And then for some people, just asking questions or trying to get clarification or an objective reality, because I do think facts <laughs> matter. And you know the political environment we're in uh, right now. Yes. Facts are under attack. Right. Ob- objective reality is under attack. So to have those conversations, um, I still need to kind of own my power. I need to stand in it, stand in my truth, and realize, know me well enough to know that I'm not trying to talk about your mama. I'm not trying to threaten you. I'm not even trying to challenge you. I'm trying to, like, do the job. That you're supposed to be doing. Yep. Confidently and expertly. Yes. And even just being a woman mm-hmm. doing this, you can throw mm-hmm. on the person of color, too, for watching – um, YouTube, you can see me. Um, that sometimes just, it's, I'm not even leaning in. Right. And my mere presence can be a trigger for yeah. people. Yes. So yes. you're building so connections. True. It's so it's kind of understanding your audience. Right. Understanding who you're talking to. And, but most importantly, knowing who you are. Knowing the value. I know the value I bring to the table. Um, and I know I'm not a bad person. I know I'm not trying to do anything to anybody. And I just need to stay consistent with that. Yeah. God, that's awesome. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, because it's so true. And I was that. I was one of those fear-driven individuals when I was in corporate. That's why you had to shed the bitch. Well, that's what (laughs) everything is about. And and so I can so relate when you say that. Actually, I start getting, like, angst in my my gut um, when, you know, it still comes up. And it reminds me, you know, that – and it reminds me in a good way, you know, I never want to go back to that person. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to keep you in check. Yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think she's making a great, you're making a great point about, you know, it's not even just kind of showing up and having a conversation with someone. It's really being even um, um, present. Yeah. It's being in the moment, which I've been training myself for a long time now to do, to stay in the moment, get out of my head, yeah. be in the moment, listen, engage. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's hard, like in a kind of a position I'm in right now, trying to manage a couple things while I'm, you know, talking, you know, interviewing and talking to somebody. At the same time, mm-hmm. I'm doing those things, but I'm not off trying to figure something else out. I'm just trying to get something, you know, a multitasking thing done. Um, but I think it's it's important that people just really need, if they really want to truly connect, and especially like you saying, you know, these 25-year relationships, these 20-year relationships, these 10-year, 5-year, we've known each other maybe now a year. Yeah. You know, about a year. yeah, probably about a year. And 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 we'll know each other for a longer period of time yeah. because we truly want to mm-hmm. and it is authentic and it is genuine and mm-hmm. not without with any motive or an agenda. Um, and so, you know, it, it, that's what the importance of connection is. Yeah. That's what the importance of connection is. All right. I want to make sure I'm not overlooking any really critical um, conversations that we wanted to have. But I think it's really Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Just, you talk about being present. And I think a lot of people today, I don't care if you're, you know, whether you're a parent, um, you're, in the, you're in the workplace, have difficulty being present. Mm. These little smartphones that we carry, mm. I know I could just mimic the... The, the positioning right here. People are just face down the entire time. Yeah. Even just walking in the airport, people are just face down. I sometimes I when I'm feeling a little devilish, I'll put my hand in front of somebody's face <laughs> when they're walking and they go, <laughs> go bounce back. And I'm like, dude, look right, up. Right. Do right, that. Look right, up. Right. Um, it's a simple thing. Mm-hmm. But part of being present is putting down the cell phone. Sure. Like if I'm having dinner with a friend and I have a friend that I love dearly. Um, and actually, I met her on LinkedIn. It's not funny. We actually met in real life. Um, and I'm practically like an auntie now to her lovely daughter. And, so, you know, and her, her husband's like, oh, Sharon's here again. But um, so we go out to eat, and I'm, and she starts with the cell phone. And I have to say, the nerd does. No. Oh, the, my your friend. friend. Oh, okay. My friend. And, I, and then sometimes I just look at her and I say, are, are we going to have dinner together? Or are you going to have dinner with your cell phone and invite me? 
And then she goes, okay, I'm going to put it down. I'm going to put it down. She really, like, can't help it. She's addicted to her phone. But I think part of just engaging somebody mm-hmm. is putting down the cell phone. The distractions. Yeah. And so I, I was having it with another friend, and she brought her, her dad and her husband and their kids. and it was just a bunch of us. Um, and as soon as we sat down, uh, my friend, she's a mom, she goes, okay, give me your cell phone. Everybody puts their cell phones in the middle of the nice. table. They're not allowed to look at them, and they've got to, like, like have conversation with people at the table. Nice. I think that's just another tool about being present. She says, well, she wants the go blue tile so she can, you know, charge everybody's phone when they're not at the dinner table, ah. you know, off to the side. Right, 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 right. So they can, they can engage. Interesting. Well, and I, you know, I heard a, um, on CBS this morning or something the other day, and there was a group of young people they were interviewing, and they, they've adopted that practice. Yeah. That if they're, they're coming together and that they're really true friends and they really want to kind of, you know, be with each other, they just had to make sure that they got disconnected from it. And I'm as guilty as the next person, yeah. and, and I'll train myself to kind of put my phone in my trunk when I'm in my car, I'll put, you know, put the phone in the other room when I'm at home. Yeah. Um, and it, it is, it's just, it's hard. It but, and it, because that's not connecting. No, it's not. That is not and connecting. I, and I'll see one else example. Mm-hmm. It's, it's being present is so important. Um, you know, my, all my family lives in upstate New York. I'm, I'm the one who moved away. And so I, you know, I talk to my mom on a daily basis. I start my day with my mom. Sometimes I've got a lot going on. So I'm, I start multitasking, and she's like, Sharon, I can hear the keys <laughs> clicking. She goes, this is our visit. This is my time to spend with my daughter. Right. She goes, do you have time for me or no? And I'm like, I'll put, I'll, I'll put it down. And then I have to put my laptop, because I have several. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I put them away. I said, I'm walking away, Mom, from my la- I'm, I'm, I'm giving you my undivided yes. attention. Yes. We're going to have a visit. Right. It, you have to. It has okay. to be intentional. It has to be intentional. We are like all out of time. No. It goes so fast. No. Do you believe it? I think we made a connection. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully we've all made a connection with all of you listening to us. Oh, gosh, we're going to have to do this again because we have, awesome. like, you know, lots more to talk about. Um, but connection is what's key. And this is the time of year, guys and gals. Uh, this is the year that we all do. We're going to be gathering with people even people that we might struggle with and, and strain with, yet leverage that time to really just connect, even connect in your disagreements, connect in your, you know, your, um, you know, with each other. Just find a way to connect because we all are different. We all have different belief systems. And just find a way, challenge yourself over the next couple of weeks in this chaos of, uh, of the holidays and New Year's to just kind of teach yourself to find a different means of connecting and to be really present and intentional with that connection. All right. Well, Sharon, thank you so much oh, for being fabulous. Part part of, you know, love it, love it, love it. Everybody will be able to see our smiley faces tomorrow when I get it up online. Uh, next week we are. We're talking not only golf, but we're talking about what can you be doing to keep them so you're not one of those people that bail out by, you know, uh, February Valentine's or even, um, uh, I was trying to think about it, St. Patrick's Day in March. Uh, people kind of tend to bail out by the February, March time period. Uh, and then go to our shadingthebitch.com radio page. Look for our radio um, episodes in the past. Go to our YouTube Shading the Bitch channel. See our lovely faces. <laughs> But all everybody have a rich, prosperous week, and I will look forward to having you right back here next Tuesday at noon Eastern time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks Bye-bye. Time. Thank you for listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bose. Join Bernadette every Tuesday at noon Eastern as she helps you shift your bitches to riches. And the dialogue is always going on at SheddingTheBitch.com. See you next week.